All right, what you're looking at here is the Trump Card 500. This is just a reference video for anyone that's uh, thinking about picking up one of these or already has one and they're looking to see what another one looks like in its complete form because this has everything it needs to work. Unfortunately, the hard drive that's in it does not work, so I can't show it in action, but it does have all the pieces. So if you're looking to compare yours to this one, that's what this video is all about. So here we are looking at the front. It's got a uh, disk activity light and a power light. This only came on when it was accessing. Of course, this one stayed on the whole time it was plugged in. Uh, you had two ways to power this thing. It, you could use the side connector, which plugged into the left side of the Amiga 500. And I will say this is the Amiga 500 version. They did make an Amiga 2000 version. Uh, it was just a card that, that went into one of the empty slots actually inside the computer. So uh, with the 500 being a slim design, it didn't have that option. So we had to connect to the side. So you could power it by just plugging it into the side of the Amiga and it would go up the Amiga's power supply, provided you didn't have a lot of other stuff plugged in as well, because it would take up near the limit of what a stock power supply would do. It does have the option in the back, and I'll show you that in just a moment, where you can plug external power into it. And then if you have, say, an external floppy or two plus this, you wouldn't run out of, wouldn't run out of power. Okay, let's uh, look at the back side of it. Okay, here we are in the back. It's got an empty port, so you can put an RST32 uh, type connection in there. Uh, if you wanted to daisy chain other stuff to it. And then it's got the port here, DIN type connector for the external power supply if you were to get your own or buy that separately. So it didn't come with one. And the whole time I have used this one, I've powered it exclusively from the Amiga's power supply. I ended up getting the largest power supply for the computer, so it wasn't a problem. But early on, if I plug that in, and then tried an external floppy, it, it just did not have power enough to, for everything. And you'd see your, your hard disk disappear midstream. All right, so here we are with a connection that goes into the uh, side of the left side of the Amiga. You'd have to pop the trap door that's covering that port off, and then you just slide that in, and it's still a little bit taller than the Amiga 500 did. All right, here is what the inside looks like. So if I understand this correctly, if you bought the version just for the Amiga 2000, this is the portion you would get. And you can see it's going into this connector here. And it's got an expansion that's unused in this scenario here. So you can plug a second card in as a pass-through. And uh, there's the hard drive itself. These are SCSI hard drives. This one. Uh, I just can't get it to spin up. But this unit, I bought it in 1990 for $650. First one they sent me, the hard drive was bad, and it, it had the click of death as soon as it came out of the box. So sent it back. They gave me another one. And this one worked uh, up until just a few years ago. So it was quite a good uh, way to add a hard drive to your Mega 500. Of course, they solved this problem in the later models, the 600 and the 1200, by adding the ability to uh, attach IDE hard drives, which made it a lot cheaper, a lot easier to add an expansion. So this was this was before those days. But yeah, that's uh, that's what it looks like cracked open. Let me get the, a little closer shot there, and we'll see what the chips look like. All right, here is a closer look at the system board. And I have seen different variations of this particular chip. So uh, you can compare that to the version that's on yours if you have one. To get this to work, you do need the driver disk, the application disk that came with it. You can download those off of pretty much any of the Amiga sites that have ADF files. So it's not too hard to come by, but you do need that software. And here's a closer look at the connection point. This is the side that goes into the Amiga. It, it also had an expansion uh, capability to it, so you could add other a second hard drive as well and add the power for that one. 
and of course it's got the one that's uh, attached to the hard drive that's in it as well so there's two sources of power there and the hard drive that uh, I got it with is a Seagate model ST 1096N as in November And I'm guessing, because it powers up and tries to spin the hard drive, it just won't spin. I'm guessing the uh, trump card itself works just fine. So uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is, instead of trying to find another SCSI hard drive, which takes a lot of power, by the way, for the computer, I'm going to try to find a, uh, a SCSI to SD solution for this and uh, see if that is a more power-efficient option. So, yep. That is a quick look at the Trump card 500 or the Amiga 500. All right, until next time.